Welcome, it's Tuesday the 1st of December and this is a Tilt webinar with Linda McCain, Le Lessons in from Lockdown, my Bitmoji and me. So I'm Helen Myers, I'm Chair of the London Branch of the Association for Language Learning. We always mention how grateful we are to Heike Philp and to Linguascope who support our conferences. And in particular, we always say thank you to Joe Dale, who is the Chief Scout, that's what he'll tell you. I'm taking your words now. Chief Scout for the this series. Joe, introduce yourself and tell us what you can do for us, please. Lovely. Thank you, um, Helen. So, uh, yeah, so um, I'm an independent languages consultant who normally makes a living uh, by uh, going around the world, uh, running training here and everywhere. But at the moment, believe it or not, I can't do that. Um, so I'm making a living through webinars as well as doing lots of free things as well through uh, the Association of Language Learning, the Tilt webinars, um, as well as uh, some other freebies as well. But um, I do have to make a living as well. So in the chat, I put in a selection of uh, 18 example sessions of things I can offer. I can also design something bespoke for you as well if you're interested in anything around remote teaching, hybrid teaching. Uh, lots, and lots of tools and ideas are shared in those documents, uh, in those example sessions. And I would be delighted to, to help you if um, you would like me to. And uh, tonight, I'm really, really delighted that we have Linda as well with us, who's going to be telling us all about her journey with Microsoft Teams and uh, living uh, in and outside of lockdown. So I uh, can't wait to get started. But thank you, everyone. OK, thank you. So Joe comes highly recommended. Um, these are run um, under the umbrella of ALL. And at this point, I always ask people, if you are a member of ALL, please, could you say that you are in the chat and encourage others to join? It's a great association. Um, we do an awful lot to channel ideas through to decision makers, but also to share ideas, um, such as through this webinar and such as through a yearly conference. And the Language World Conference has already been advertised. It's going to be online this, this year. So we do hope that you'll join us. As far as these events are concerned, um, on the AWL London site, you'll see that there's a tab called webinars, and there you can see a list of all of the many, many webinars that we've had, We're going right back to 2011, actually, but over 50 since lockdown started in March. And there's a, um, a, a database where you can search for key words. Coming soon for AWL London, and AWL generally. Um, on Friday, if you are a trainee in your first year of teaching or a recently qualified teacher in particular, we invite you to come along. We've got a lovely group, a lovely group of people who come along on a Friday and we spend about an hour together, have a little chat. We're going to be doing some breakout rooms, we do some games. People just share ideas about what's going well. Um, so that I would really recommend. Please tell people you know um, about that. Save the date, we've just decided on this today, so we haven't got a link yet, um, but next Thursday, the 10th of December, we're going to have a webinar, bring us up to date with where we're up to on the GCSE um, speaking endorsement. And then we're going to have another one in February after people have had the meetings with their respective exam boards. We've got a Christmas party coming along on the 12th of December when we're going to be playing um, pub type quiz. And we're even going to try charades, I think. I'm not, I don't want to put anybody off, but it'd be lovely to see you. <laughs> so we won't do charades if that's not your sort of thing. Um, <laughs> and then on the 16th of January, our January event, unfortunately can't take place at the BFI, the British Film Institute, but we're going to be doing it online. And we've got Mark Reed from the British Films Institute. He's going to be doing a half hour session at the beginning and it's lovely what he's going to be talking about. So um, do go along and see those. And I'd like to advertise Rachel Hawke's Advent webinars, which are coming up on the 5th of December and the 12th of December. All of these you can um, get from the link which you saw earlier on. So now I'm going to um, pass it over to Joe to introduce our speaker. And then I'm really, really looking forward to this. Fantastic. Thank you, Helen. So um, I'm delighted that uh, Linda has said yes to presenting for us this evening and uh, hearing all about her, her journey. Um, I'm also delighted the fact that we have um, uh, Scottish teachers joining our TILT webinars now, uh, which is just absolutely brilliant. We have a few more uh, who I've approached who, are, who, who have said yes, but we haven't uh, uh, organised the exact dates yet for other Scottish um, teachers. But I think just think it's wonderful how we can all come together, We're all going through the same experience and how we can all come together and share ideas. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I was particularly uh, struck by a video that I saw Linda appearing in that was produced, um, uh, uh, but, well, which, which featured many Scottish teachers. Uh, it, um, it was a few months ago now. It was a, I think it was called something like Life Under Lockdown or that it was a, about people expressing their experiences. And uh, what, I, what really struck me about um, Linda's video was just her, how very down to earth and very 
authentic she was in what she was saying, which I just loved. And also, Linda, you also contributed to the MFL Twitter RT podcast, I remember as well, that you recorded some uh, some audio uh, for me for uh, your practice around uh, escape rooms, which is also really, really appreciated as well. So without further ado, I'll hand, hand over to Linda, and we're very much looking forward to learning with you this evening about all your, your adventures with Microsoft Teams and your, uh, your authentic responses on how you dealt with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Joe. Um, so I'm hoping, I was speaking to Joe earlier, I'm hoping you won't need subtitles tonight from um, north of the border. Um, I tend to, I have quite a broad accent, but it tends to be quite clear, so we should be okay. And at the minute, I've completely forgotten even how to show a PowerPoint. There we go. So, um, pleased to be with you tonight. It's a real privilege to be with you as well. And I want to take this opportunity to actually thank so many of you. If you're on a webinar at this time on a Tuesday night, then that shows real commitment and you are probably involved in the sharing of resources and that goes on in the modern languages community and there is nothing tonight that I am going to show you that you will probably have not seen before and um, I guess what's really important here is how you use stuff that other people make up as well and how you adapt it in your own lessons so as Joe has already told you I want to give you a very personal journey it's very honest you don't get anything else with me um, and it's not been an easy journey over the past, what, eight, nine months? I don't, it's probably longer than that now. Um, and I want to talk you through how, as a school, we have a vision for how we go about this, but also um, how, as a language department, we really, really need to look at um, what we're doing in languages to try and encourage people to take our um, subject. So um, we're going to look mainly at three different strands of the blended learning model. So Microsoft Teams, um, PowerPoint, but PowerPoint being used for the virtual classroom and Microsoft OneNote as an online jotter. Um, I want to look very much at both the successes and the challenges of this. Um, and also, if we get time, look at the, the benefits, the advantages of using Microsoft OneNote as a tool for differentiation as well. Um, as a means for differentiation, particularly in modern languages. I'm very aware of how overwhelmed we all are at the minute, just with daily life. And I think if you take anything away from tonight, it's about not being overwhelmed by the amount of apps, by the amount of websites, digital tools, methodology that's available to us. And just, you know, give yourself a break. Um, I also want to give you questions to think about as I'm talking. And... The questions are, is technology a fitting replacement for live teaching? Are we trying to harden modern languages? And have we thrown the baby out with the bathwater? OK, so I want you to think about that as I'm talking. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Mrs. McLean the Bitmoji. Now, when we first started this uh, journey, um, creating virtual classrooms, I was very excited about the fact that I could dress myself in different clothes, I could make myself look better than, than I actually do. And I quite loved this little bit more at the beginning of all this. Um, I think if I'm being honest, I'm pretty much ready to poke out her eyes now and use her as a dartboard. And by the end of this session, you might be ready to do the same thing. Um, like I said before, there's nothing new in here. Um, I am so very grateful to the language teacher community. I think we're an amazing bunch of people, how readily and willing we are to share ideas, to share resources on Twitter, on YouTube, whatever it is. And this is just an honest reflection of someone who's in her 20th year teaching. I can't believe I'm actually saying that. Um, and it's my journey since March, which has been a very, very different journey to the, the 19 years going before that. So you'll see, hopefully, on the screen, uh, several stages of my journey, and I'd like you to take you through um, the many different stages of that. The background to where I'm coming from tonight comes from, it may be a familiar picture to you, an ever-shrinking modern languages department, both in staff numbers and in the numbers of pupils in the senior phase. Now, just let me explain that. In Scotland, we have EGE, which is Broad General Education. So that's S1 to S3, 11 to 14 year olds. And then we have the senior phase S4 to S6, which would be your GCSE 
And for us, it's NAP5, National 5, higher than advanced higher. So we are facing the, the situation in our department, or we were facing the situation where uh, the timetable for the new session had no senior phase classes. And I have to be very honest with you and say that was possibly one of the lowest points um, of my career, actually facing that situation. We have turned it around a bit and COVID has kind of given us the opportunity to still have small classes, but um, it really made us um, take stock of where we were as a department. Um, I had already personally embarked on kind of individual um, change in my methodology of teaching. I had been using a lot of the Conte Smith style, uh, listening, flooding, input, etc., and was trying sentence stealers, all the all the things that we all know and have tried out probably already. Um, it was working very well for me and the pupil engagement, particularly in the smaller, uh, the, the junior classes rather, they were loving this. They were loving the interaction. They were getting success from it. And I was getting really excited about what I could do with this. And we were getting ready or I was trying to share it with others in the department so that we could revamp our courses to, um, to use some of this methodology. And then, of course, lockdown. And that put pay to everything that I was in the middle of doing. So now I want to talk, I've taken you through a very brief background of my department, but I want to share this picture with you. This is my school. Um, now, before I take you through some of the things that we've been doing as a school, I am under no illusion that everyone has a school like this. I know that they don't. Um, I also know that we are in a very privileged position in terms of this, the investment that our school has put into digital transformation. Um, and in the video that I'm about to show you, um, you will see exactly um, what we've been doing with that and the vision from the school. What I would like to say is that because of the idea of the virtual classroom, which I got from, I think it was a YouTube clip, maybe one of Joe's YouTube clips um, on PowerPoint, using PowerPoint as a virtual classroom, or it was a Twitter that I had read, my school took on my idea or the idea of other modern languages teachers. And we went for PowerPoint as a virtual classroom, Teams, Microsoft Teams as a means of communication and posts, and Microsoft OneNote as an online jotter. And we decided to stick with those three things for our blended learning model. So our school vision, I'm about to show you a video. I'm hoping it will work for you. Um, it's a very exciting wee video and it just kind of shows you uh, where we're at as a school and what we're trying to do. Um, and I'll explain the finances behind that as well, because it looks as if we are a very privileged um, school with lots of money. We're not. It's just everything we've got has gone into to this digital transformation. So um, hopefully this will come up so that I can play it. Yep, it does. Here we go. Um, I hopefully can get the sound as well. Come on, there we go. At West Colbert High School, we've fully embraced digital transformation. And over the next two minutes, I'm going to share with you some of the strategies that we've implemented in order to respond to the restrictions around COVID-19, but also some of the strategies that are going to ensure continuity of learning for our young people in the future. From an experience in lockdown, we knew that we needed to reduce the number of ways that the young people were accessing materials and submitting work for assessment. So we settled on three apps. PowerPoint, which would be used as a virtual classroom environment. Teams for teachers and learners to communicate, collaborate and like cast lessons for anyone not in the classroom. And one note as an online jotter. We have used our school budget to purchase 400 Android tablets to ensure every young person has access to a device. This is paired with my five defences to ensure that everyone is able to connect to online learning platforms. Teachers are using tablets, webcams and swivel devices to ensure that every young person that is not in a class has the same classroom experience and contact with a practitioner. We've also changed practitioner mindset on digital technology being an add-on and less conversations are taking place about the technology itself and staff are back to focusing on learning, teaching and assessment as it should be and being creative and innovative in the planning because they are emboldened by the digital capability. Communication with parents and carers is a vital element in support parents feel part of 
for wider school community. I'll stop it there because actually that just um, gives you what you need in terms of um, how the school is fixed for um, devices. And I want to talk a bit about that. The Scottish Government gave schools uh, money to help us recover from lockdown. And our school put all of that money into making sure that every pupil had a device. Now, you'll see the senior pupils that are, uh, in the freeze picture there are using phones. That is not the way that we work in the school. So that was just as part of a, a kind of senior pupil meeting, I think they were using their phones. Everyone has an Android device that is a tablet or they bring their own device. And we started a, a scheme of just encouraging people to bring their own device. So about half the school are using their own device, which is either a laptop, a netbook, or a tablet. And the other half have been given a device to use. Um, now the video makes it look like everything in the garden is rosy. I can fully assure you that that is not the case. There have been many challenges with this. Um, and the age old line of Miss, I've not got a pencil has become Miss, my device isn't charged, I've not got my charger, I've left it at home, et cetera, et cetera. So we are currently working through our frustrations with that and trying to find alternatives um, that do not include them being able to use their phone, which is what they all want to do. Um, we're in a lovely new building. That is not the case all over Scotland. This is not a typical school, um, but I am very privileged and very proud to be part of what West Calder High School are trying to achieve in this. So let me take you to the next stage of my journey. Oops. Okay. So it started way back when we were all learning from home, teaching from home. And at that time, West Calder High School devised an online timetable where students would have an hour of contact time via Teams, via video lessons, um, a week per subject. Okay, now that meant that at times I would be teaching the entire first year of maybe 200 pupils on Teams. That meant their microphones had to be disabled and we had to work our way through all the different things um, that they would do to try and mute us as well. Lots of different wee things that caused us some trouble, but we worked our way through those and managed to work out how to use Teams to the best of our advantage um, in that. I have to say um, it was exhausting doing hour long lessons and the amount of prep going into a lesson like that because you were trying to fit it all into one hour and um, we had to then take a step back and look at that and think well does it need to be you are on show for an hour and I think that's what I'm talking about modern languages teachers working too hard does it really need to be an all singing, all dancing lesson for an hour or can you give them something to do and they go away and do it? So we really had to reflect on that. And it was also a time of reflection for me um, as a department as well, um, thinking about the fact that we had no senior pupils and what we were going to do about it. Um, it was time to read. I got actually to read books. Um, I probably have done more CLPL or CPD um, in this time than I have in my 19 years teaching together. I got time to look at um, various different YouTube clips. I'm name dropping down the bottom there and a few familiar names I'm sure to all of you as well. So that was a real time of reflection for us and that was where we were really using the time to develop our resources for what was going to be the blended learning model. So we had decided as a school that we would when we were going back to school, it would not be full time, that pupils would be back maybe two days, working from home two days, and everything could be done within the virtual classroom teams in one note. So that was the stage we were at during lockdown. Um, and it was an exciting time. Um, and we were still full of hope that um, it would only be for a very short time. And I guess the question lies, can you teach an old dog new tricks? And this old dog had lots of new tricks to learn, lots of new things she wanted to try out. And so, yeah, I was excited about all the different things I could do. So this is just a wee sample of our three strands, our blended learning model. So on the top left, um, we've got our virtual classroom. And within the virtual classroom, for those of you that don't know, although I'm pretty sure that most of you will know what I'm talking about, the icons are hyperlinked to various different activities. And the beauty of that for me is that you can use already made up resources and just embed them in a PowerPoint slide. 
And I couldn't believe after all these years of using PowerPoint that I didn't know you could do that. Um, and I was really excited about that and kind of overdid it, I have to say, slightly on the things that I was putting in my virtual classroom. Um, and I'll talk about how we've stripped it back. Then we've got our Microsoft Teams down there. Please excuse the discrepancies in languages. Um, I really was putting this together, not thinking about the fact that the Bitmoji I used had French and the Teams that I'm showing you is my senior German class. But Teams is ideal for online meetings, but also for posting links and setting up assignments. So every day just now, I'm posting the links to the lesson on Teams. So if there are people working at home, they can get access to the virtual classroom from that, okay? And then on the bottom right hand side, we've got our OneNote and I'll talk you through how I use that um, for differentiation, yes, but also just how we use it as an online jotter. And there's amazing things you can do with OneNote. It has its um, negative sides like everything else and I'll try not to, to labour on them too much, too much tonight. Just trying to be positive and encourage you. So it was dead exciting at this point. I was um, really up for anything. And I really liked the idea of the blended learning. Um, so not the idea behind that, of course, was that you could have a non-specialist and um, you would the pupils would stay in one room and the, they could just work their way through the lessons on their timetable, whether they're at home doing it or whether they're in school. And you could have a non-specialist just facilitating the lesson and making sure the technology is working. And they would, the idea, of course, was they would all sit with headphones plugged into their laptops or devices and away they go. And I'm quite sure you'll know what's coming next. The reality of that is very different to what we had envisaged. So um, this is a, an example of one of my virtual classrooms. So we've got the audio, just using PowerPoint record audio there for instructions. As well as all this, as a humanities and languages collaborative, we are trying to introduce dual coding as a way of teaching and the principles of instruction. And so, um, we are really thinking about how we design our virtual classroom with that in mind. Um, so you've got your audio instructions. The MP3 player takes you to a listening activity. Um, it takes you to a PowerPoint, actually, with the listening embedded in the PowerPoint. Um, this has been stripped right back. When I first started using these, like I said, I was a wee bit overexcited. There were way too many things in it. Um, so I stripped it right back so that pupils can access what they need to access. So if you click on the jotter, it's not hyperlinked, but usually it would take them straight to their OneNote, the, the class notebook that I have set up via Microsoft. So everything's there for them. And ideally, they should be able to work their way through it independently with no help from me. I did start that sentence with ideally, so you'll know again what's coming next. The exit pass, we tried it as, as a school to make sure that our icons were consistent so that pupils knew what everything did. So the globe was online activities, the exit pass usually takes them to some form of Microsoft Forms um, assessment activity, um, a vocab test, something like that. So it takes them straight to that as well. So that's all been embedded there. Um, okay, this is another example. This is one that I'm working with my senior pupils just now on the case system. It's riveting stuff. For those of you who are German teachers, you'll know exactly what I mean. So in this virtual classroom, I've got video lessons within the cases. I've got um, activities in their OneNote. I've got the PowerPoint that I take them through and then online activities, et cetera, et cetera. Now, again, this is ideal. And once you've made it up, although it's a lot of preparation, once it's there, it's there, it's there forever. I've got all these pre-recorded lessons as well. And if um, the amount of work I put in this year is anything to go by next year is going to be an absolute breeze, she said. I've been saying that for 19 years now. But anyway, so another one that I'm using just now with the junior school, um, and it's just taken straight from Studio One. Um, but I've got my sentence builders in here as well. So I'm trying to incorporate all the stuff that I was trying, all the Conte style um, lessons that I was trying before. I'm trying to incorporate them into my virtual classroom with lots of listening, etc. as well. Okay, so that's the virtual classroom. I've explained Teams. Teams really is just for communication. So since we've been back at school, um, we have pretty much moved away from using Teams as much as we 
we're using it during lockdown because the, the, most of the pupils are there in front of us. It is ideal for pupils who are working from home and who are self-isolating. Um, and I'll talk you through a wee incident that we had just a few weeks back where Teams was very, very useful. It was great during lockdown, um, particularly for my small senior class, because they were able, I was able to unmute them and they were able to put, allow them to put their videos on and stuff. And some of them just really, really wanted that contact with me. And from a, a relationship point of view, and just for their mental health to have someone to talk to from school. Um, I think we all think that they don't like school, but actually for many pupils, it's a, a, the only structure they have in their life. And it's some, for some of them, the only security that they have in their life. And they enjoyed that wee chat um, on a Friday at 11 o'clock when it was their hour lesson. So Teams, very useful for that and for communication and posts and assignments as well. There's so much more you can do with Teams but you definitely don't want me to be here all night, so I'll move on. Okay, one... ...jotter page, if you like. So I am using um, a, a, a narrow reading activity. Again, the German's not matching the French, but apologies for that. I'm sure you'll forgive me for that. But the narrow reading activity, and. One note, the possibilities are endless, but there are many limitations. So, and that's to do with the amount of traffic, the volume of traffic using OneNote. So if you've got a large class and you can distribute the page across three classes at a time, if you like, it takes quite a while for that to sync. And the pupils are very quick to say, I've no got it, miss. I've no got the page, it's no working. But we're trying to teach them just now to problem solve and to tell, well, be more specific when you say it's not working. Can you work out a way to get it working? And very often it's to do with them not being signed into their Glow account, uh, with them trying to go straight into the app and not through the browser, etc. So they're, they're developing strategies for problem solving, shall we say, um, to deal with that. Um, what I love about OneNote is uh, what it can do for pupils, ESN pupils. Um, and... Um, I have several pupils who in the past would have really struggled with an activity like this. Um, and I would have been standing at the photocopier, photocopying things in pink for those that need a pink background, for photocopying in yellow for those that need yellow, blue, et cetera, et cetera, or dishing out overlays. The beauty of OneNote is that they can change the background color to suit their learning needs. They can change the font size. They can use Immersive Reader, which reads the text for them and reads it very well, I have to say. I'm very impressed with Immersive Reader in terms of the French pronunciation, the German pronunciation, and also the fact that it can show parts of speech, it can highlight nouns. There are some drawbacks as a language teacher and for the very perceptive pupils, they have already discovered that if you get them to do a piece of writing, they can type it up in English, put it into Immersive Reader, translate it, and they get this lovely, perfect French because it is way better than anything that Google Translate can do. So we are trying to work out ways of them not being able to do that at the minute. And <laughs> um, they've not all cottoned on to it, so we're all right. Um, but it's for some of them, they have worked out that they can really cheat and they're not showing their learning, they're just showing what Microsoft can do. So that's just one of the, the limitations um, you can see it, it helps them to be organised. We try and make sure that the lessons are numbered um, so that they get clear instructions as to where they're to go each day. Um, you can distribute differentiated materials to individual pupils. They don't all need to get the same page. Um, so OneNote, I have, I have to be honest here, that's not new to me. I've been using OneNote particularly with my ASN pupils for about four years now. Um, so when the school decided to use it, again, it was my lessons that were being used as um, an example of how to use it, um, particularly for ESN pupils, because that's a particular passion of mine, really, that all pupils should be included in languages and that if they have a barrier to their learning, we should be doing something to take away that barrier. So um, that and teaching German this is how you get me <laughs> my sparks flying. That's what I get excited about. OK, this is just an example, another um, PowerPoint slide but just showing you how you can use all the things that you would normally do in class if you're using gap fills, et cetera. And this is a listening activity and um, trying to get my senior pupils to get the idea behind modal verbs and in German. So again, it's 
thrilling grammar. Um, but I do, I am a bit of a grammar geek, so I don't shy away from doing grammar. I love it. Um, and so do the pupils, actually. Um, they love the patterns and they love the structure. So I try to fit that in as much as I can, but using different ways now, using different things, not going straight to the grammar book. Um, this is some examples of my sentence stealers. I have, if anybody can come up with an idea of how you do sentence stealers when you're not allowed to move around the room, when I'm not allowed to leave my two meter safety zone, when pupils are not allowed to physically touch resources and share them, um, I'd be more than happy to take on board your ideas. Um, I have been able to use MindReader, obviously. They can still do their Battleships game where they pick three sentences and they've got to try and guess the other person's three sentences by saying them out loud. Um, there's various other things you can do that are safe, um, and I have been doing them, but Sentence Stealers, which was the one that they loved, they used to come in and we're doing a sentence, they have not been able to play that game with them. And, um, they're missing it and I'm missing it. But hey, if we get a vaccine, we'll be back to sentence dealers again, hopefully. OK, this is just an example of a sentence builder. Again, everything's been done in PowerPoint. Um, and then it's really easy to incorporate it into the virtual classroom slides. As well as that, what I can do is just a snipping tool version of that and pop that sentence builder into their OneNote. And they have this lovely colour coded version of it. And we're saving a fortune in photocopying as well, because we are pretty much paperless now. Um, so, yeah, sentence builders. Um, this is just your um, listening activities. I I've taken this idea from the listening pyramids that many people have been sharing. And I thought I would just kind of change it around a wee bit and do a pit stop challenge. And you know the score with the listening pyramids, everything. The sentences get longer. They listen to it. Again, this is all PowerPoint. They listen to it and then they reveal the sentence. Um, I am not putting my French accent on. Yeah, <laughs> on cinema. Oh, it's playing. It wasn't meant to play out loud. So there we go. And the the idea, of course, behind this is that they can be self sufficient doing this activity. Um, so again, for learners that take a wee bit longer or want to listen to it as many times as they can, they can have their earphones into it. That was the plan when we started all this. I have to say, being the person that I am, I can't sit in a classroom with pupils in front of me and watch them listening to their screens. I just can't do it. So I have been doing this live the same way that I would have been doing it um, before uh, COVID um, took hold. So I have to say the way I'm teaching is not that different other than I can't go and help them. I can't have them moving around the room. I can't give them physical resources, but I can still do similar activities. And there's still a lot of me at the front, which is probably something I need to work on, way, way too much of me. But um, I think they need all the encouragement they can get at the minute. And I, I think it's so destroying if they're just going from class to class, watching and listening to a screen. So um, the virtual classroom for me has become the B plan for those who are at home, not for people who are actually in front of me in the class, because we are a language after all, and we need to interact with these kids. So um, I have reverted to form, if you like, on that one, and I am doing live lessons. Uh, when we started this, the idea would be that they would work through the virtual classroom and the teachers would sit at their desks, not move, and be correcting what they're doing and giving feedback on one note, because you can give instant feedback and I just can't work like that. It just goes against my nature and everything that I'm in teaching to do. So um, I have stopped that and I'm doing live lessons now with the kids in front of me. OK, I don't want to take you through all that. It's going to do it, though, isn't it? Yeah. OK, so um, next stage of the journey was, right, OK, this is working. I'm liking this. I can do this. I can keep going. And I started using lots of different things that I'd seen um, via some of these webinars, in fact, um, some YouTube clips of other people, some reading. Um, I started using Loom to record some lessons, pre-record some uh, lessons as well. Um, and then, of course, they charged you after the five minutes. So that kind of put that plan out the window. Or I just had to keep my, my videos short. Flippity.net, I've been loving using that for my sentence builder type activities, where I have all the columns the way I would have them in the sentence builder. And then 
Again, I've got pre-recorded videos of me using Flippity and they have to translate the sentences that are coming up or they have to do a dictation where they're writing down what they hear. So I use Flippity, but they can't see it. Potun or how potun it is. Yeah, they, I've used it for wee video clips. Um, I have to say I found it quite cumbersome to use to put the videos together, uh, but I have got wee grammar videos that I've used and everything that I've created that's on video, I have uploaded onto the thrilling uh, WCHS Languages YouTube, which I'll give you channel, I'll give you at the end, but um, it's got 13 subscribers and most of that's my German class because they thought they would try and make me feel better. So um, Quicker, that's a new one that I've been using, thanks to Joe for that one. Um, great for using for talking. Um, I've been struggling to think how can we get them to talk. OneNote has that facility though. It has, um, you can record audio onto it. So uh, pupils, you can get ask them some questions and they can just record themselves answering on that. Um, quicker though, what I love about it is its use for peer feedback, peer assessment, because it can be anonymous. So in second year just now, um, so they've been writing wee bits about their town. Uh, they write it in their OneNote, they copy and paste it straight into Quicker. Their names aren't on it, but it's in their OneNote for me for evidence. But then we can look at it and peer assess it and use all our kind of spell checking, checking grammar, etc. So that's been a very useful tool, so easy to use as well and free. Um, Flickers, uh, I've been using a lot for um, whole class response systems uh, long before lockdown. And um, I've just discovered last week we were missing it. My senior pupils were wondering how on earth we were ever going to use clickers again because we couldn't share. I had one set of laminated cards and really it was going to be a bit um, tiresome to have to clean them down every time. But clickers have now created a version as well where you can do it uh, for the blended learning model really so they can use the computer screens for clickers as well. Um, Quizlet, as always, uh, Quizlet's been around for some time now. Uh, but I've been using that a lot with the juniors, trying to teach them how to, to learn vocabulary and different ways of doing that. The only downside, of course, is I can't do Quizlet live in terms of them moving around and changing the randomising of the groups. Um, and that my pupils really loved Quizlet live. So I'm looking forward to the days when we can get back to that. And then Genially, the website that you can use for escape rooms. And also I have been using it for... Um, interactive snakes and ladders games that could be used at home as well uh, for talking. And again, it was another clip that I saw probably from here of somebody sharing that or from a Twitter feed, I think it was. And I went on and created a snakes and ladders board for my seniors for talking, to get um, talking going and to get it to be more interactive. And just, again, trying to increase the enjoyment in language learning because we, we need to do that while other subjects I feel don't. Um, and it might be that I've got a bit of a chip in my shoulder about that, about us having to fight all the time and to keep numbers and to keep them taking our subject. But um, when you're faced with no senior phase classes, then you're going to do whatever it takes. So enjoyment has to be at the top of the um, priority list there so that they, they choose your subject. Um, OK, so we had all this blended learning model um, and I had spent most of May and June creating lovely virtual classrooms, all excited about it. And then June happened. And it must have been, I think there'll probably be people online tonight that will correct me on this, but I think it was pretty much not far from the end of term. We were all set to go. We had the timetable all made for blended learning. And then um, the Scottish government made an announcement that um, it was all changed and basically all pupils would be coming back to school full time from the 11th of August. So as a school, we kind of had to very little time to change what we were doing. So we decided not to change what we were doing and everything that we had in place for the blended learning model would go ahead because what we thought was we still don't know what we're coming back to. We could be facing teacher and pupil absence. So we have to have the plan. B did not become the plan A, we just stuck with plan A, and um, so that we were able to cover all eventualities. And really that's the way that we've been, we've been working with now, and we're sticking to these three things of virtual classroom, OneNote, and Teams. Um, 
The reality, of course, as in languages, that we really, really need to focus on the interactive element of it and try to increase enjoyment. So, um, like I say, I'm up for any ideas as to how to do that in a COVID safe way. I will eventually find time to, to look at some of the webinars where that has been the topic area. At the minute, I'm not quite there yet. Um, I'm just still preparing lots and lots of lessons uh, in virtual classrooms. So I just wanted to show you uh, OneNote. So if I click on this jotter, it should take you to one classes, one note that um, is already made up. And I just want to kind of give you some of the, the things that it can do. This is where it will probably all go very wrong for me. So please forgive me if that happens. So this is one note. And actually, this was an assessment that my third years were doing. So I'm hopefully going to take you to a pupil's uh, one note, which we see. We can just see your PowerPoint at the moment, Linda. Is that oh, the idea? I know why that is. Right. Give me a wee second and I'll click see new it. share in Zoom. Yeah, I'll stop sharing and then start again. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or yeah, either stop sharing or you can click new share and then share while you're sharing your, your current PowerPoint. Okay. I don't know how to do that. So I'll stop sharing. <laughs> yeah, whichever is easier, it's fine. And um I'll see if I can find my one note there it's there so we'll do that okay is that better now joe yes fantastic yes okay brilliant so um i'm on a pupil's notebook i'm just going to quickly go to um homework and this is where it's probably not going to show you her change in the background but um let's see listening assessment right because i'm in the browser oh it does it does so um this pupil has um, she needs to have her background in yellow, so she's been working her way through her assessment um, and for some reason it's not syncing to show the finished version, but of course I've got the sound file in there, they can work away at their own pace. So in assessments they can work away, they can listen to it as many times as they want to, they've not got that restriction of the teacher only playing it twice, three times. Um, the other thing you can do is, for example, just distribute the page. If I go into that, I can distribute page, I can distribute to different groups. So I can have the class, if it's a, a bi-level class, like my senior class, then I can distribute it to different groups. I can distribute it to individuals. And the cross notebook one is my favorite. So rather than spending hours in front of photocopiers, I can send a page to the three first year classes that I teach, which is 90 pupils in a matter of seconds. And they have that, and that's great. You can also, um, if you're marking work, you can just select the page that you want to mark and it uh, picks that particular page. So if it was that assessment, for example, I just click on the assessment um, from the class notebook and it brings everybody's assessments up and that's all you see. There's so many other things. You've got the dictate tool. Um, so if I go home, hopefully that'll come up. So the wee microphone, you can dictate and you can dictate it in the language. So again, they could be, if they're not particularly good at writing, but they want to write a sentence in French, it can do it for them. I'm not overly keen on them doing that, as you can imagine. Um, but also the immersive reader function for me is one of the best things that we've got on this. So it can read to pupils in whatever language you need to, to read it in, and you would just go to the view tab for that. This is one of these things I could probably do a whole session on how to use OneNote. So I'm, I'm not gonna do that, you'll be pleased to know. Um, so I'll go back to my PowerPoint if that's okay. And I'm more than happy to, you know, answer any questions in this later or, you know, put me an email for that as well. So uh, back to my PowerPoint. Is it that one? Yes, it is. Wonderful. Right. So um, the Wisp of Gold, by the way, that's just a, a wee game that I was playing during lockdown where they had to find where the Wisp of Gold was. The result of that is I now have a pupil who's bringing me in a whisp of gold almost every day in life. Um, and that's our way of uh, probably trying to get a good teaching grade when the exams come, who knows? Um, but yeah, one note, fantastic tool, but like I said, it has its limitations and it's mainly due to the syncing issues um, and also with the volume of traffic that we're using it with. So if I am distributing it to 90 people, I've got to make sure I've maybe done it a couple of days beforehand rather than just before the lesson. Um, so um, that's that. 
And then we get to half term, as they say down south, or the October week, as we say up here, October holiday. And you've got one very exhausted, emotional, and definitely the end of my tether teacher. Um, I would love to say I'm a pretty positive person. Um, and I would love to say that this has been a very enriching and exciting experience. And in some ways it was, particularly before the holidays, it was coming back to school full time, facing the levels of restrictions that we were facing, both in our personal lives and in our professional lives, has been by far the most challenging time of my career. Um, and this is where I get very honest. Um, I have faced situations where every tool that I had in my armory for controlling a class has been taken off me. Um, and any level of even trying to control a class, you feel that you're having a confrontation because you've got to raise your voice for it to be heard. We're also wearing, uh, wearing sorry, face coverings in every single class at the minute. Um, so just from a language's point of view, that is a complete and utter nightmare for them to be able to understand what you're saying and follow instructions. So by the time it got to half term, I was one of very, very many people who didn't really know how we were going to continue at the, the pace that we were. The, the work level, the amount of work we have is just unreal because you're preparing almost two lessons. So you're doing a lesson live, but you've prepared the, the here's the one prepared earlier version for teams and for pupils self-isolating. And I did have to take a step back and think, are we trying too hard? Um, are we giving ourselves too much of a hard time? Are we making it too difficult for the pupils and for ourselves? And I was frustrated at just, I've come out of lessons just feeling that I hadn't taught them anything, that we'd spend most of the lesson just trying to get them onto OneNote, trying to get them onto their screens, trying to get them onto the internet, which frequently wasn't working, trying to deal with the, the myriads of people who had forgotten their tablet and left it at home or it wasn't charged and all that kind of stuff just left us with a sense of getting nowhere, banging our heads off a brick wall. And I will admit I felt completely overwhelmed at times. But we had our October week and it's not like we've got any choice. We've got to keep going. We've got to keep going for the sake of the pupils because they're struggling too, that none of this is easy for anybody. Um, there is none of this. If I hear new normal one more time, I think I'm going to scream. There is nothing normal in any way about the way I'm teaching right now. It's just the oddest experience ever. So I've made my motto, and this is something that I want you to all take away tonight, a one day at a time. And that's a cue for a song, but that's another thing. I'm not allowed to sing either. So <laughs> one day at a time because everything's changing so quickly. So we just get our head around one thing and then we're getting told that's to change again. So we're not to wear face coverings. We have to wear face coverings. Um, there's just so many things like that. So we can't think too far ahead. We can't beat ourselves up about our lessons not being the best thing that we've ever done. Because they aren't, they're not going to be, this is not normal and um, we just have to persevere one day at a time. And then the next stage of my journey, well, the backup plan had to get used eventually because I got a phone call in the middle of a lesson to say, Linda, Mrs McLean, could you just confirm who sits beside, because we're very strict about where they sit in classes and who they sit with at lunchtime, can you confirm the close contacts for this particular pupil? She's tested positive and 14 members of your class, I think, will have to go home and self-isolate. And that's exactly what happened. Five minutes later, they were, at, they were getting sent home, 14 pupils. And for the rest of the next two weeks, I had to teach that lesson to half the class at home and half the class in front of me. And the lessons were posted in Teams, but I got to use what we're calling the swivel tool. And that is a robot where you put the iPad in it and it follows you around the room. And um, you teach in front of the board and they can see you teaching at home. Um, and you just open up a Teams call and everything that's happening in class is sent to the pupils who are working from home. 
and I had the most amazing experience that just made me feel great again. You know, that, that wee boost that you need sometimes when I was asking a question to the class and the people from home were shouting out the answers as well. And it was just the most exciting thing to see the technology actually working. The only problem is the way that the camera looks at you, it's not the most flattering experience of my life. But once you get over that, um, <laughs> the advantages by far outweigh the disadvantages of that. And those pupils all came back two weeks or 10 days actually later. None of them had contracted COVID other than the pupil who had originally tested positive. And it was all good. And we all felt quite tough with ourselves, proud of ourselves that that had worked. So let me take you through very quickly because I have I've got no clock on my computer here, so I have no idea how long I've been rabbiting on for, but I'm sure you'll um, allow me to indulge. So challenges, engagement. Pupils are sitting in front of screens most of the day. So they are getting just a tad screen weary, and I'm sure we can all totally identify with that. Um, the technology itself, when it works, it's amazing, but they are, there is the, the constant daily frustration of the one or two people it's not working for and talking them through how to do it. And I feel like a broken record and you start getting ratty with them and it's not the pupil's fault really, it's usually something else. The level of interaction is an issue in language classes, you know, and the things we used to do, we can't do anymore. Differentiation now, you'll see it's in both my lists and that's for a very good reason. I do feel that some pupils are struggling even just to use the technology. And I will say that because of the, the amount of work I've had, differentiating materials has not been actually one of my top priorities. I am very grateful that OneNote does much of that for me, but I can't just rely on that. And I'm really having to think about that um, more and more as well. The amount of time that goes into preparing these virtual classrooms is unreal. I totally underestimated how much time it would take me to prepare the first and second year courses. And I'm now working, if I'm lucky, a week ahead. Um, and the idea was in the summer that I would get it all done. And of course, that never happens. We're getting some kickback from pupils who just want us to say, there's a bit of paper or just use your phone. And we're not letting them because they're never on their phone doing what they're meant to be doing. They're usually on something else. And it is absolutely exhausting. There's no way to make that sound any better. It is exhausting. But there is so much good come out of this. As a department, as a collaborative humanities and languages, we have aimed to go 100% paperless. We're probably about 97% paperless at the minute. But from an environmental point of view, that's a plus. Uh, you don't get to, I don't need to cart 30 um, jotters that goodness knows where they've been and who's touched them home with me anymore. The days of jotter, I, I couldn't care less that I never see a jotter again in my life. Um, from a marking point of view, you can read their writing because it's typed. And also um, feedback, you can copy and paste your feedback in. You can give audio feedback on OneNote, which saves some time as well. So all that's good. The CLPL or CPD opportunities have been amazing. I already explained about that, that how many things I've tuned into and tried out. The time for reflection is good. Uh, not that I've got much time for reflection now, but that time during lockdown, that was amazing time, just actually reflecting on my practice and kind of just slightly more than halfway through my career as a teacher. Um, again, scary saying that out loud, but having the time to reflect on things and not being scared to try new things. And then the differenti de sorry, differentiation side, the positive side of using OneNote for that, the immersive reader, the being able to change the background, et cetera, et cetera. I do feel that pupils are learning more responsibility and a wee bit more independence. Slightly frustrated at times about just how much we still have to spoon feed them through and totally shocked by what they can't do with technology given how they seem to be glued to it constantly. Um, pupils are gaining valuable IT skills, and that was skills that I think we assumed they had, and we realized they haven't, and now we're teaching them that, well, actually, is there a job in this world now where you're not going to be using technology? And I don't think 
I don't think there is. I think we're preparing them for the new future for them. And um, whether they like it or not, they're going to have to learn that paper and pencil actually is not the way the world is going, um, just like we have had to learn that as well. So <laughs> you'll be so glad we've reached the end of my journey because you must be fed up listening to me by now because I do tend to go on a bit. But I want to, um, this is when I turn into Granny McLean, they call me in the staff room because I'm always trying to kind of keep people going. Give yourself a break. There's not a single person on here tonight. The very fact you're on a webinar at this time on a Tuesday night means that you are already going way above and beyond what you need to be doing. And we are doing our best. Somebody said to me in the staff room just a few weeks ago, Linda, you can only do what you can do. <laughs> it's a little bit obvious, yes, but she was right. One day at a time. And again, I put these questions out to you. Are we making life too hard for ourselves? Are we throwing the baby out with the bathwater? Are we relying on technology too much? Don't try too many things at once. Stick with something that you want to try. Try it out a few times, and if you like it, stick with it. Don't then go and try something else again. And sometimes, dare I say it, the old ways work too. So a couple of weeks ago, I decided I would do a vocab test on paper, so don't tell my boss. And you know, it was amazing watching the, these wee first years with pencil and paper doing their vocab test. And I didn't have to take the paper in because they took pictures on their phone and then posted it in their OneNote. So I had a picture of what they were doing. I, I realised they couldn't use their OneNote for the vocab test at the last minute because all the answers were in there. So I couldn't use that. But like I said previously, we're doing a job just now which does not resemble in any way the job that we are trained for. It's a completely new job. Um, so I leave that with you um, and I am open to questions. Um, I am more than willing to give back what uh, you have all given me. So any resources that you would like to see in more detail, I'm willing to share that. That's my school email there, under.mclean at westlothian.org.uk. I have a personal Twitter feed, which is lmclean77. That gives my age away. And then we have the Modern Languages Department Twitter feed, WCHS, West Calder High School Languages. And then there's that thrilling uh, YouTube channel, which uh, nobody wants to see any videos on, but some of the videos may come in handy, particularly if you're teaching senior German classes and want to talk them through cases and stuff. There's some stuff there that you can do, which um, might come in useful if you've got absent staff and things as well and are looking for some cover work for them. Okay, so thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you for listening. Um, and hopefully you don't hate your, my Bitmoji as much as I hate her at the minute. So thank you very much. That was amazing, Linda. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I, I loved your honesty as I, as I knew we, we all would. <clears throat> and um, there's been some lovely comments. Um, uh, so for example, uh, let me, yeah, so Florence has said, you have simply made me feel better. So thank you. It's lovely. <laughs> I think I, I love the, the Granny McLean uh, quote. That's lovely. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just been fabulous. It's been, and uh, um, Claude has said, uh, no, Linda, it was great to have a, an honest and real sharing valuable knowledge. So, yeah, exactly, exactly um, what I was saying. I think that's uh, that's absolutely brilliant. So thank you so much. I think we've got one question, which was, okay. you know, you were talking about... Um, the uh is it swivel is that right the, the, yes, the uh -huh. yeah so is, is that is that how you spell it or is it s-w-i-v-l no, I, or... I just know that that's what we call it um it's used with the ipad and it's a robot so i, I think it'd just be s-w-i-v-e-l i don't know um right no worries we can find that out using, i'm sure yeah. well that's that that sounded really really good um yeah for it sure. is. it's quite exciting what it can do Fantastic. I see some more comments are coming in. Uh, oh, right. Okay. So uh, Florence is saying, where do you find your lovely virtual classroom? Did you make them all yourself? Um, I have made them all myself. Yeah. I just basically put into the design, uh, the format, you add a picture for the design part of it, format picture, and you just go into online pictures and type in wall and floor um, and things like that. There is a YouTube video somewhere where it shows you how to do that on PowerPoint. 
Um, and I'm, again, I could make up tutorial videos if people were willing to do that. It would only take me five, 10 minutes just showing you how to do a virtual classroom from beginning to end. Um, and it would come in quite handy anyway to show to the other staff in the school that are still maybe not using it yet because it's not all been 100% um, easy ride with the staff. So Excellent. Yeah, I'm more so, willing to do that and share it. So that that would be amazing if that's possible. So can I just clarify when you make your virtual classroom in PowerPoint, you then share it uh, via the actual file itself in Teams. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So I share. I have everything saved on OneDrive. I just copy the link from OneDrive for the pupils. Right. And give them it that way. Gotcha. So I make right. an, an editable version for the other teachers in the department so that they can change all the bitmojis and stuff. Um, and I make a non-editable version for pupils. Right, fantastic. We'll share Got, that it. One. Got it. Got yeah. it. That's great. Um, there's a lovely comment from Zoe. Let me just find it for you. <laughs> yeah, Fab Linda, so proud to have you on our WL One Plus Two team. Well done, you. Lovely, absolutely <laughs> lovely. That's great. Okay, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, Right, yeah. Florence has been talking about Slides Mania. I don't know if you've heard of Slides Mania, but some people have been using that as well. We had um, Jimena last week uh, talking in relation to Google Slides, although you could use them with PowerPoint as well. Mm -hmm. um, but Florence has also said, but yours are great. So that's lovely. So lots of people are loving your Bitmoji um, comment. Ah, oh, right. So Helen, Helen Myers is saying, do you find PowerPoint virtual slides better than being pasted into a OneNote page? Um, it's interesting. That's a very good question. We have come very much away from using the virtual classroom. Um, so everything just now is in one note. The reason being the pupils were just struggling with too many things. So even just with those three apps, they weren't coping with it. So now I just put everything into their one note. Everything that's on the PowerPoint is in their one note and distribute it that way uh, because they just couldn't cope with all the things they were being asked to do. Um, so it's about making it easier for them at the end of the day. So, yeah, everything's just in one note now, unless they are working from home. Right. That's fantastic. Um, we've got a, a, a lovely question here from Lucy, which is, I've had a problem with students opening files I've shared, and then they get edited, so they are no longer blank for the others. Ah. What am I doing wrong? So that's a template issue, isn't it, presumably? Yeah. So basically, for the pupils, they would get a... a Copy, I copy the link so that it's only Glow users that can use it, Scottish Glow users, and also that I don't allow editing. So what they've then got to do is just, it's view only, but everything should work. And if you save it as macro enabled presentation, all your audio links and things should work, um, even though they've got view only. But the other thing is they can still download it, I think, and save their own copy. Right, yeah, yeah, that's in, true. In which case... And that's what I would be encouraging them to do if it's a Word document that you're sharing or whatever, just encourage them all the time to do that. But it is a pain because I had to go in and redo quite a few things at the beginning. Um, but that was other teachers that were doing that, so we'll not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just um, uh, another th uh, thought about OneNote. I went to the I, spe I was speaking at the Satil uh, Teach Meet uh, yeah. a couple of hours ago, um, and. Uh, one of the teachers recommended a um, a website called Worksheet Genius, which uh -huh. essentially has lots of different um, uh, like English uh, activities, which could yep. be used in the uh, modern languages classroom, and it allows you to like create like things like you know um, uh, changing the word order or uh, changing the letter order or, or cracking the code, and then you can then export the results as a PDF. So my thought was you could then presumably upload that into OneNote and save yeah. it as a as a uh, is it a printout? Is that right? You can embed a PDF, yeah, can't you? And then they could then they get the worksheet and they can draw over it as well. So exactly. um, I actually use the Linguiscope worksheets that way because they're obviously on PDF and we've got a subscription, so I'm able to use OneNote even with Linguiscope uh, for them to use the worksheet. So yeah, aha. Uh -huh. Fantastic. So I've just put that in the chat. It's called worksheetgenius.com. Okay. And I think, as I said, I've literally just come across it this evening. Sure. But I think uh, it could be a useful way of yeah, inserting a PDF into OneNote or maybe taking the, taking a screenshot and putting it into Jamboard or equivalent and then getting yeah. the children to then annotate over the top to fill in the answers. I just thought, That's yeah, right. mm -hmm. put that out there, as it were. Right. I think I think I'm right in saying these are all the questions, but everyone's been saying, you know, thank you so much for your your presentation it's been fantastic um so i think um we'll we'll do our we'll do our um photo shoot if that's okay helen is that right is that the next plan yes, please if anybody uh, 
<laughs> um, if anybody doesn't mind showing their face, it's just nice to have a picture to put onto the um, onto the website of people. So if you're brave enough to show your face, that would be Fantastic. lovely. And then I'm going to say just final thanks to Joe as well. So if I would be no problem. Like, oh. Great stuff. Oh, look, it? everybody's Brilliant. appearing. You see, there's Claude. You seem to be in the dark there, Claude. <laughs> Good to see you. It's really nice to see these faces. <laughs> You got to know each other quite well, didn't we, over the um, over the lockdown as well? So I'm going to I'm facing it as well. All right, so I'm I'm about to take pictures. So one, two, three. There we are. And I think I'm going to do another one. I saved my go. Oh, some more people have appeared. Here you go. Hey. And, <laughs> and again, one, two, three. Great to see you. Lovely. Fantastic. Excellent. <laughs> so am I allowed to do my little bit of thanks just to say? Please, really, please have really, that. Over, over to you. Well, just I'm echoing everything that everybody else has said. And um, Linda, about your session, really good. I think that so many of us, you can see from the chat, a lot of us, myself included, we're, we're going along the same sort of journey as you are. And it was so good to see you being honest about what works <laughs> and what doesn't work. That yeah. really is, you know, and um, because sometimes we can be a bit in awe of people who seem to be just doing everything and everything is, you know, going along with me. But it is so right to be learning from, from what you've done. So thank you so much. And you've also sparked off something there. You'll be able to read through the chat, the lovely comments. Um, the fact that we had thought, and Joe, you said, yes, we must do this. We'd thought of having a sort of self-help clinic webinar when perhaps we could get together. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are using Teams, particularly, it doesn't have to be just Teams, but Linda, it was lovely the way that as you were going through, you were saying to us, so if anyone's got an idea about this, let me know. So if, yeah. and that's the sort of thing that this community is for. So you've really sparked something off there, which is great. Um, and I put a link to the Facebook group, which um, Jenna Riley has set up, which is for people who do who are on Office 365 and already six people have, have joined this <laughs> evening. Just to say to those people, I, I accepted you, even though you haven't clicked to say you'd read all the rules, but I'm sure you have, and I'm sure you're very Ooh. good. <laughs> Make sure you don't be naughty now, because I've let you in. <laughs> but um, no, I thought it was great. Anybody else wants to open up their mic and say anything, feel free. When I, when I watch these back, I always think, oh gosh, I do go on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to hear uh, just people. just a thought can i just ask a question so you were saying uh you upload say the powerpoint to OneDrive. what's what's the advantage of doing that as opposed to uploading in the file section in teams is that is um, it basically the same thing yeah but the teams file section can't cope with it they were taken it wasn't downloading um right. so the one drives much quicker um, right. just particularly when we were in lockdown a lot of the kids couldn't access the files because it just was like a PowerPoint like that obviously has got a lot in it, so it just was taking ages, and it was, they just couldn't cope. Their home Wi-Fi, all that kind of stuff, it just wasn't coping with it. So, and I think my right also is that the team is a bit that I, I don't use the file section now in the uh -huh. teams because as you go from one year to another, then it's not a straightforward thing about keeping that. Whereas really, if you keep all your stuff in your OneDrive, yep. that's right. easier, isn't it? It's always yeah. that same uh -huh. link. So yeah, personally, exactly. I'm not using the files anymore. Yeah. And, and I know that we, we have a very good um, team of people helping us called Cloudbox. Yeah. And um, they were warning us from the beginning about making anything too data heavy because yeah. of loading things up. Yeah. So even with Class Notebook, they were warning against doing too many printouts of PowerPoint, yeah. for example. But, yeah. but I found um, something that I was reassured about was that it seemed that you can put in links to... You know, stream video and that doesn't take up space in the actual OneNote. No, exactly. That is that's, that's a great thing. And is it amazing? Yeah. yeah. Just great that you can make a video, or you've got a YouTube video, you put the link, and it makes their page interesting and they want to click on things, don't they? Mm -hmm. So and we've had lots of so Laurence, nice to see you and welcome to AWL. Do you want to open your mic and say hello to us? <laughs> so it's lovely. Well, I just wanted to say really well, thank you, Linda, but I wanted to say thank you to all because I feel like you have been amazing in terms of CPD and what effectively when I thought at the beginning of the year when you mentioned the price, it was expensive, but it was really like, what, two tanks of petrol or something and then you have just like made my year 
Now, everybody at school saying, oh, Laurence is good at technology. And I was like, I'm not. It's because you guys are, and then you've passed on everything. And Linda, it's lovely to hear like what a one-one school is. We are far away from you in terms of technology, but it's lovely to hear what works and what doesn't. And the solution is not in technology, really, but what you make of it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. See, Joe nodding there. You're always saying that, Joe, aren't you, really? Because even though you're seen as Mr Tech, you're always saying it, but that's not the only thing. Yeah. No, it's about the pedagogy, and it's, yeah. it's about. I, I just think it's just it's fascinating to hear everyone's story, and everyone's story is different, but we can learn so much from each other, and, and it's just wonderful. Yeah, I love it. It's great. I mean, I, I, ju I just I said in the chat about isn't it fantastic the way that we're supporting each other during this situation, and uh, it's been yeah, it's it's very um, it's very humbling. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think other subjects do it quite as well, actually. Mm. Um, and I don't know whether it is because we're fighting for survival sometimes, but that like we all look after each other, and I don't think that goes on in other subjects. Yeah, so. we're special, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I think that's always been the case. But I, I think, uh, as in, I think the language teaching community has have always been very helpful. But particularly, yeah. I think during lockdown, yes, oh, uh, or during the pandemic, I think particularly, yeah. uh, it's been. Uh, yeah, it's been very moving to see how people have helped each other. I think it's been fantastic. I really think it's fair to say almost because we're attracted to languages, we are more risk takers, aren't we? We don't mind going mm. abroad and meeting new people and having people into our homes and that sort of thing. I always think that in a that perhaps might make us a you know a little bit different, perhaps. Much as I love people from other areas. <laughs> <laughs> but um now this has been good. And thank you for your words, Laurence, as well, because you know, in fact, everybody could get everything for free. You don't have to pay things, but it's almost a sort of bit like I feel like joining the National Trust or, you know, by, by doing that, by contributing to AWL, then you're helping people to be in offices to make some make things work and so that communications can work. So thank you very much for your words. It's great. I should, oh, I should stop the recording, shall I? Sort of forget to do. Probably. <laughs>